the last type of redox reaction we're going to learn about is how to balance something in a base. The steps for this guy look a lot like balancing in an acid, but this time uh, we're going to have to add on one extra little step towards the end. Let's go through it. Our first step is going to be to break up the, that reaction into two half reactions, so our bromide turns into this bromate ion and the permanganate ion is going to turn into MnO2. The orange step up here says to balance for mass everything except hydrogens and oxygens. Uh, so in that top reaction I have one bromine, one bromine. In the bottom reaction one manganese, one manganese. So I'm already balanced for mass. Now I have to tackle those oxygens and hydrogens. So just like before, we have to balance the number of oxygens by adding water to the oxygen deficient side. So if I do that, on my bromide side, on the left side, I don't have any O's, but on the bromate side, I've got three. So that means I would have to add three waters to the left-hand side to get my three H2O's. Uh, in the bottom reaction, I've got four O's on the left, two O's on the right, so I'm oxygen deficient by two oxygens on the right-hand side. I would need to add two waters. Now, I fixed my O's, but my H's are out of whack. So temporarily, we're gonna pretend like this is in an acidic solution, and then we're gonna fix that at the end, as you'll see. So the way we're gonna fix our hydrogen problem, on the top reaction there, we have six hydrogens on the left, no hydrogens on the right. So I'm gonna add six H pluses. We're gonna pretend like it's an acid for right now. In the bottom reaction, I have four hydrogens on the left, but I don't have any, or excuse me, I have four on the right, none on the left. So I need to add four H pluses over here. Right now, everything is balanced for mass. Now we have to balance for charge. So we're going to add electrons to the more positive side. When I look at the left-hand side of the top reaction, I have three neutral waters and one bromide at negative one. So the left-hand side is negative one. The right-hand side is negative one, but six hydrogen ions. So that side is a positive five. So if we have negative one on the left, positive five on the right, the right-hand side's the more positive side, I would have to add six electrons to this side to make it match the overall negative one charge on the left-hand side. For the bottom reaction, I have four plus ones and a negative one, so a net plus three on the left, neutral on the right, I add electrons to my more positive side, which is the left-hand side in this case, I'd have to add three to make it match the neutral on the right-hand side. Now we need to make sure that our electrons match because the one reaction where somebody's losing electrons, those are gained by the other half reaction. Since we have six electrons in our top reaction, only three in the bottom, we have to double this bottom reaction. I would recommend that you rewrite it with everything doubled, as I'm going to do here. Our next step is to add the half reactions together to give the overall reaction. So we're gonna start canceling out things that look exactly the same on both sides. Um, when I look, my electrons will always cancel. I have three waters on the left, four waters on the right, so I have net one water left here. Then I have uh, six hydrogen ions on the top reaction, eight and the bottom, so I have a net two hydrogens here. These guys cancel out. So what I'd have left from the top reaction, bromide, then 
uh, two hydrogen ions, two permanganates. On the right-hand side, I have my bromate is the only thing left from that top reaction, my two MnO2s, and a water molecule. The problem with this guy right now is that in our overall reaction, we have hydrogen ions, but we're balancing in a base. You wouldn't have hydrogen ions in a base. So what we need to do is cancel out those hydrogen ions. In a base, what you'd have are um, hydroxide ions floating around. Well, hydroxide ions would attack hydrogen ions to make water molecules. I have two hydrogen ions on the left. I could attack those with two hydrogen, uh, uh, two hydroxide ions. And these guys will turn into two water molecules instead, two HOHs. But I can't add two hydroxides to just the left without also doing the same thing to the right-hand side because it was balanced for mass and charge already before adding the hydroxides. So whatever we do to the left-hand side, we have to do to the right. And now, when we merged together and made those water molecules, now I have two water molecules on the left, one on the right. So net, I've got one water molecule left over. So when we get to that final uh, balanced equation all the way at the very end, we'd have bromide plus water, just one, plus two permanganates, a bromate, two MnO2s, and two hydroxides. So the process for balancing in an acid and a base is exactly the same up until that very last step. On that very last step, once you get there, right here, once you get here, you wouldn't have any hydrogen ions floating around in a base. I, uh, a basic solution would have hydroxide ions floating around, so they would attack any hydrogen ions that would be there, turn them into water, and whatever you do to the left-hand side, we have to do to the right-hand side in order to keep it overall balanced for both mass and charge. If you check the charges to make sure those are correct, um, you have your bromide and two permanganates, so the overall charge on the left-hand side here is negative three, one from the bromide, two from the permanganates. The water is neutral. On the right-hand side, we have a negative one from our bromate, two negative ones from our hydroxide, so this guy is also negative three. The MnO2 is neutral. You could go through the process of oxidation numbers for all the species involved in order to decide which substance is being oxidized and which substance is being reduced during the course of the reaction by comparing oxidation numbers on the left to oxidation numbers on the right.